Work takes time to do, and everyone works at different rates. But that will not stop us from getting an estimate on how much time that work will take to accomplish. We'll be exploring how to do that in this video. And by the way, you can check out these examples with detailed explanations in the Mastering AMCA book, link in the description. Let's start off with an example. Alex, using substitution or elimination, can solve 20 two-variable equations in 10 minutes. Bob, who uses the diagonal product method, can solve 22 variable equations in two minutes. Wow, that's five times faster. If I were you, I would learn the diagonal product method. You can find a link to the diagonal product method in the description as well. How much time will it take both of them working together to solve 62 variable equations? Interesting. So for these types of problems, the idea is, is you want to isolate for a given unit of time. And what does that mean? So Alex can solve 20 equations in 10 minutes, right? So in one minute, he can solve two equations divided by 10. Bob can solve, using the very quick diagonal product method, can solve 22 variable equations in two minutes. So in one minute, 10 equations. So the trick is you want to look at one minute, one minute, one unit of time and isolate on that. Then you know, working together in one minute, they can solve two plus 10, 12 equations in one minute. Okay, interesting. So how long will it take to solve 60 equations? Well, 12 equations, one minute, 60 is 12 times five, so five minutes. Cool. So the key idea in this problem, isolate the one minute and then add them up. And then it was just division. And there's a good formula that you can use here. So let's say person A can do something A in some, can do something in A amount of time and someone else can do it in B amount of time, like maybe five hours and 10 hours. Then working together, they can do it in AB over A plus B amount of time. And this works for other things besides work as well. Now you can use this formula, it's definitely a shortcut, but if you always forget, you can just use the same logic that we just showed here. Let's explore another cool application of this. This one, a little bit more interesting. All experienced workers work at a constant rate and all new workers work at a different constant rate. So all experienced workers are the same and all new workers are the same and they have different rates that they work at, right? 12 experienced workers and six new workers can build a house in six months. So 12 experienced plus six new takes six months for one house. Six experienced workers plus 12 new workers can build a house in nine months. How, how many months will it take nine experienced and nine new workers? Hmm, interesting. So a very common mistake is to think, oh, 12 plus six new workers, we're looking for nine experienced, nine new workers. It's just gonna be the average of six and nine, right? Mm -mm. That's, not, that's not true because you can't just average time like that. Okay, so the, the trick here for these types of problems, like I mentioned earlier, is to isolate on one unit of time. In this case, month. So in, if they can build a house in six months, in one month, they can build one sixth of a house, one sixth house. Similarly, six experience and 12 new workers, if they can build a house in nine months, in one month, they can build a ninth of a house. Cool. So that means that nine experience and nine new workers. Hmm. Now what we can do is we know in one month they can build one sixth of a house, 12 experience and six new. And in six experience and 12 new workers can build in one month, one ninth of a house. So now that means that nine experience and nine new workers 
in one month can build the average of one six and one ninth of a house. One six plus one ninth divided by two. So the key thing to remember here is you cannot just average time like that, but the amount of work they they're doing can be averaged because the the rate at which they're working, the the rate at which the twelve experience six new six experience twelve new workers work at averaging those rates gives the rate for nine experience and nine new workers. So for that we can average the amount of work they do, but be careful you cannot do that for time. So you couldn't have just said six plus nine divided by two. That doesn't work. So that means that in one month nine experienced and nine new workers can build one six plus one ninth divided by two. That's five over 18 divided by two, five over, over 36 houses. And from here, we can see that then to build one house, we essentially multiply by 36 by five. So we multiply by 36 by five to the month. So we get in 36 by five months, nine experienced and nine new workers can build a house. So the answer, 36 over five. So the cool part about this problem was realizing 12 experience, six new, six experience, 12 new to get one six and one ninth. And then what we did was we averaged the rate of work to get the amount of houses they could build in one month. And then we found how many months it takes to build one house. Remember, you cannot just average the amount of time. That is a very common mistake. Okay, now to a problem about rocket scientists. Two rocket scientists, Bill Einstein and Albert Nye, are building a spaceship and they will work six hours a day for standard pay. It would take Albert a total of 48 hours to build the rocket individually and Bill a total of 36 hours to build it individually. But the manager can motivate them to work extra hours by giving them $100 extra for each hour. But the manager only has $1,000 to give for extra pay. What's the minimum number of whole days that the rocket can be completed in? Okay, so $1,000 means that so if it's a thousand dollars worth of extra pay and each hour of extra pay costs a hundred dollars that means that that's 10 hours of extra work for a thousand dollars 10 hours of extra work interesting okay so it looks here they're working at different rates they don't all work at the same rate albert can build the rocket individually in 48 hours Bill, 36. Hmm. So, just like we've been doing for the last few problems, let's isolate in one unit of time, so one hour. So, in one rocket, can be built in 48 hours. Let's move this down. If Albert can build a rocket in 48 hours, in one hour, Albert can build one over 48 rockets. Similarly, in one hour, Bill can build one over 36 rockets. Right, just divide by 36. Oh, let me move away. Okay, right? One over 36 rockets in one hour for Bill. So who can, who's faster at building? Albert or Bill? Well, 1 over 36 is more than 1 over 48. So Bill is faster than Albert is at building rockets because 1 over 36 is more than 1 over 48, of course. Interesting. So from here, who should we give the extra hours to? Albert or Bill? Well, clearly, Bill is the faster worker. So we should be giving bill as much extra time as possible and not albert who's a slower worker so we should give all of these extra hours that we have all the extra hours the manager can give can get from albert and bill should go to bill because bill is faster so in 10 hours how much can build can bill build 10 over 36 of the rocket 
So that means, and this is with extra pay, extra pay time. That means with regular time, Al Albert and Bill have to build 26 out of 36 of the rocket. Okay, so 26 out of 36 for regular pay. Well, okay, in regular pay, in regular hours, they work six hours a day. So in six hours, Albert can build six out of 48 rockets, Bill six out of 36. That's one eighth plus one sixth, or we can write it as three over 24 plus four over 24. That's seven over 24, seven over 24. So this is how many rockets both of them can build in six hours. And this is how much they need to build in regular time. So this is one day's worth of effort. In one day, working regular time, they can build 7 over 24 rockets. But they need to build 26 out of 36 rockets in regular time. So the answer is just going to be 26 over 36 over 7 over 24. Okay? From here, what should we do? We should... Let's, read, let's write this in a different way. Let's write it this way. Cool. So this is... 52 by 72 divided by 21 by 72. That's 52 by 21. Interesting. 52 by 21. So that means that we're, that's going to be a little bit, that's going to be more than two, but less than three, right? 52 over 21 is more than two, but less than three. So it will take somewhere between two and three days. And remember, the 10 over 36 doesn't matter because that's extra time beyond the six hours. So that won't affect the number of days. So, but the question says minimum number of whole days. Hmm. So it has to be three because it can't be two days. It's just minimum whole days. So the answer is three. So the idea for this problem was to see, again, isolate for one unit of time. One over 36 rockets, one over 48 rockets. And then we saw... Who should we give the extra time to? We should give it to Bill. And that means 26 over 36 must be built in regular time. And then we saw that how much they can accomplish in one day by just doing some ratios, 7 over 24. Whoops. And that means that it will take them somewhere between, between 2 and 3 days. But we're asking for minimum whole days. So 3 is our answer. Cool. And you can check out all these practice problems in the free Mastering AMC8 book. But now we're going to move on to algebraic manipulation and equations. We're going to explore some unique equations that you might have not seen before. And we'll see how to tackle these tricky problems in the next video. You can click on it right there.